What's up world? This is Colby Cajero, the 33 year old breast cancer patient. And today I wanted to go over with you my pathology report from the biopsy that was done. And I picked up this report on Friday, November the 12th. And the biopsy, if you'll remember correctly, was done a week before on November the 5th. I got the report, the result back on November the 9th that I did in fact have breast cancer. And so this pathology report just goes over all of the details about my tumor from the biopsy, okay? So, um, so I just wanna go over that with you. And please understand that I am not a medical doctor, I am not an oncologist, and I am just gonna relay information that I have just either learned on my own from my own research or from my breast surgeon or medical oncologist. And again, these are just my understandings of what is going on, okay? So if I am wrong, I will correct anything that I have um, learned that is inaccurate in a future video. So, um, so again, please don't take everything that I say as gospel truth because again, this is just my understanding of what is going on in my life in this insane time of trying to understand what all this means, okay? So we'll start with the clinical history. Mass in the right breast. There is a 1.5 centimeter by 1.5 centimeter by one centimeter oval mass with an indistinct margin in the right breast at the eight o'clock posterior depth, five centimeters from the nipple. This mass resembles a fibroadenoma and is suspicious of malignancy. So if you remember from my previous video, the radiologist originally state, thought that the mass was a fibroadenoma. She reassured me Colby, please do not worry about this. I see this all the time in girls your age. That's most likely what this is, but because the borders, the edges are a little bit fuzzy, I just want to do a biopsy just to be certain that it, that it is in fact a fibroadenoma. Okay, well, we obviously know it wasn't the fibroadenoma and it was in fact um, cancer. So the size, let's talk about that for a second. So 1.5 centimeters is a little bit bigger than the size of a pea, but not quite the size of a peanut. So from my understanding in terms of staging, as long as it is less than two centimeters, then it is considered stage one. So as of right now, the breast surgeon feels that I am in stage one, but they cannot confirm that until the day of surgery when they remove the mass. And on the day of surgery, they are also gonna biopsy a sentinel lymph node, which is a lymph node that is closest to the breast tissue to see if there's any lymph node involvement, okay? If there is lymph node involvement, that is gonna change the staging, okay? And I do not know all of the ins and outs of the staging, and so I'm not even gonna pretend that I do. I am just really hoping that this is still stage one and it hasn't spread to a lymph node and or anywhere else in the body for that matter. From my understanding, breast cancer is a primary site of cancer. So meaning I don't have cancer somewhere else that showed up as breast cancer or that caused breast cancer from somewhere else in the body. Okay. So usually what that means is breast cancer can spread to other parts of the body so that's why they are going to biopsy the lymph nodes to see if it's gotten to the lymph node because if it's gotten to the lymph node then it could be spreading to other parts of the body again that's my understanding of how all of this works and i hope that that is accurate so again we won't know until the day of surgery for sure the actual stage but right now everything is pointing to stage one just based on the size. So the next thing that they look at is the grade of the tumor. So mine is a three out of three. So they, uh, they say that that means that the tumor is poorly differentiated, meaning that it's not defined, it's not clear. And it goes over the grading system or the point system on how they determine the grade. So I got three points for tubule formation I got three points for nuclear pleomorphism and two points for mitotic rate, giving me a total of eight points. So according to this scale that they used, 
anything um, that scores between eight and nine is a grade three. So again, what that means is that it is poorly differentiated and what that means it's it's pretty aggressive from my understanding, okay? So that is the grading. And the next thing that they look at is the prognostic studies. So what they did was they took in the in the sample they they wanted to run tests to find out what type of cancer it is in the fact that what's feeding the cancer, right? So that they can learn how to treat the cancer. So they did an estrogen receptor test, a progesterone receptor test, HER2 receptor test, and um, another thing that they did was a KI-67. So KI, I'll, I'll get to that in just a second, but that's not a receptor. So estrogen and progesterone are hormones. So if the cancer is hormone positive, then they can use hormone suppression drugs to help fight the cancer and make sure that the cancer, that's how they kill it, right? You stop feeding the beast, it stops growing, okay? It eventually dies. So my cancer is estrogen and progesterone positive for both. So I am hormone positive. And that's why um, my medical oncologist wants to do the chemo for the 12 weeks or one of the reasons she wants to do the chemo for the 12 weeks is, um, I'm sorry, that has nothing to do with chemo. That is why she wants me to take anti-hormone therapy after the chemo for several years in order to make sure that we stop feeding the beast, okay? The next, um, oh, before I go to the next one, from my understanding, if my cancer was estrogen or progesterone negative, so i.e. hormone negative, that would just change how they treat it. So they would use other medications that I am not familiar with because that's not my type of cancer. So um, so that is a little bit different there. I, I don't know that, that answer. I don't know what that path would look like, but I do know that there are other things that they'll use to treat that type of cancer if it is hormone negative. And then the next one is HER2. So HER stands for Human Epidermal Receptor 2, okay? My cancer is HER2 negative, but according to my understanding from what I've, um, just from what I've researched, breast cells have HER2 receptors normally. So that is common, even in normal breast tissue. However, when cancer spreads out of control or gets so advanced, I guess, um, that's when it starts overly expressing those HER2 receptors. So at that point, it's a bad thing. And if it were positive for that, then they have medication to treat that. Mine is according to, um, so they tested it two separate ways. So the first one was by immunohistochemistry, which says it is zero, so negative whatsoever. It says 0% of cells show complete membrane staining. So what they did was they decided, okay, well, we're not sure if that's really true. So we're going to send it for a second test by some dude named Fish. I don't know what that means. So that report came back as indeterminate. So what my, my oncologist, my medical oncologist wants to do is she wants to, on the day of surgery, she wants to, when the, when the tissue is removed, she wants to send it for further testing to definitively determine whether or not it is HER2 positive or negative because that will change her treatment plan for me for treating this cancer after the mass is removed, okay? So, more to come on that. So, the next, the third and final test was... KI-67. So what this is, is it is a test to determine how rapidly growing and how quickly new cells are forming with this, with your cancer, right? So anything below 10 is considered low percentage wise. Anything from 10 to 20 is borderline and anything above 20 is considered high. Mine is at a 50%. 
which my medical oncologist said is not her words, but mine insane. Um, she said that's really, really rare and that is super fast growing. And because it's grade three, it's super aggressive. So because of those two things, that is why she's decided that she wants to put me on the chemo for at least 12 weeks. And again, if we get the HER2 back and it is positive after all, then that might change that plan. So we just have to wait for sh to see for sure. But I was hoping that if they, if the cancer hadn't spread to the lymph nodes that we wouldn't have to do chemo. But she explained to me that even if it is only in the breast tissue and hasn't gone to the lymph nodes, then she still wants to do chemo because of how aggressive and quickly growing this is because it is number one, again, so rare for somebody my age who's really healthy to get cancer of any type. Second of all, for it to be this quickly growing, she is really concerned that even if there, that if, if there is just even one little cell of cancer left in the breast tissue at all, because even the the most excellent breast surgeon in the world can't get rid of all of the breast tissue, right? So she said that she doesn't want to take any chances. She just wants to kill all the guys, quit feeding the beast, kill everything. So that is where we're at with the pathology report. So that's all of the report that I have. And um, I will keep you guys updated once I learn from surgery, what is truly going on with the HER2 and if that changes our plan. Um, second thing, since we're talking about pathology, I thought that I would give us fun facts about just some dental pathology. And again, I'm not a dental pathologist, or excuse me, an oral pathologist. And so I am no expert, but what I can tell you is that if you develop a sore in the mouth, a lesion of any kind, Rinse with warm salt water. Warm salt water is the absolute best thing. It is just the cheapest and easiest way to heal anything in the mouth, okay? So, rinse with warm salt water several times a day. If after two weeks, whatever is in your mouth hasn't healed or hasn't shown improvements, go see a dentist, go see a, a dental specialist or you know a dental professional of some sort just to have it looked at, okay? What's gonna happen usually at that appointment, uh, the dentist will a lot of times take pictures or make really good measurements and things like that to document the size and description of whatever is in your mouth. They may prescribe medication, they may tell you to do other things, but usually what they'll do is they'll want to themselves monitor it over a period of time, okay? So don't be discouraged if that is their recommendation, okay? That is for us to be able to document for our purposes and compare. So sometimes we'll even take pictures, okay? So don't be discouraged if something shows up and it's not healing or anything like that. They also are probably gonna ask you a ton of different questions if you have, you know, if you're on medications or things like that or what your health status is because overall health status, you know, uncontrolled diabetes, HIV, all of these things um, can affect healing. So we just wanna know your overall health. So please make sure that you are informing your dental professional of everything going on in your health and in your life. Um, I remember that I had a patient in dental school tell me that, why do you need to know that? It doesn't affect my mouth, but it does. So remember, blood runs through your mouth. Your mouth is our area, right? So we care what's going on overall through the whole body not just in your mouth so make sure that you share all that with us and then um, back to the pathology stuff is that um, your dental professional will let you know his or her recommendations on what to do okay so if further testing is needed or anything else okay so don't be discouraged just know that most lesions in the mouth heal within two weeks so take heart if you're worried about something, warm salt water rinses for a couple weeks and that should help heal, all right? And as always, make sure you're brushing for at least two minutes twice a day, flossing for at least uh, one time a day. 
if you're a braces patient, please, 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 please brush for at least four minutes twice a day and floss at least once a day. All right. So thank you for that. Next thing I wanted to share with you is scripture from Isaiah 41:10 that I am leaning on after trying to digest this pathology report. Okay. So it says, fear not for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. So I am leaning on this scripture to help give me the strength that I need to get through this. And I know that God will provide for you as well. You just have to lean on him. You just have to trust him and give all your worries and all your cares to him. Lay them out, word vomit them at his feet and he will take care of you, okay? So thank you so much for listening. I hope this has been informative and thank you so, so much. And we are gonna get through this. You're gonna get through this. You're a boss and you are gonna crush this, okay? We're not gonna let cancer beat us. We're gonna kick cancer's ass.